All right, so today I'm gonna to do an eight by eight inch oil painting and I'm doing a still life. All right, so you guys know I mostly do plein air landscapes. Um, that's the thing I'm most motivated to do. But when I first got started, I was painting a lot of these little still lifes. Um, I did like a painting a day for six months and I would do six by six inch paintings. And most of them were still lifes of fruit and then sometimes random tools or just objects from around the house. And uh, it was a really uh, good growing experience. And also those were my first sales. So I would post them online and um, I sold a bunch of these little uh, still lifes. And so I have the images from those. They're like 10 years old, but today I wanna do these orange slices that's always been a favorite painting of mine. And I wanna do a larger version of it. I wanna do it in an eight by eight and still preserve the looseness of that original painting. Um, a lot of times with a little painting, it's kind of funny. You think you're painting loose, but it's hard to explain. Um, when you're painting small, if you photograph it, it exaggerates the looseness. So in other words, the strokes you use on a six by six inch panel would look tight on a 12 by 12, if that makes sense. Um, so what I want to do is I want to scale up the looseness from that six by six. Um, so anyway, all right, so I'm going to go through the materials I'm using uh, really quickly so we can get into the process, which was kind of shortened because my SD card maxed out. Sorry about that, but we got through most of the process. I'm using a masonite panel that I've primed with three coats of acrylic gesso. Final coat has a little bit of pumice in it. 4F pumice, two tablespoons per one cup of thin gesso. That gives the uh, that gives the surface some tooth and a little bit of absorbency. Um, and then for medium, I'm using some home brew here, which is a mix of one part mineral spirits to one part stand oil to two parts linseed oil. And the colors I'm using are titanium white, um, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red light, lizard crimson, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And also what I do is I tone the canvas or I tone the panel with some burnt sienna. Important to look at the pigment code. The burnt sienna I'm using has, uh, the code is PR101. Always wanna look at the pigment code. Um, burnt sienna by Utrecht is PR101. But I've noticed like other companies like Gamblin, their burnt sienna is totally different. Um, and I think if you want to get pigment PR 101 with somebody like Gamlin, it's transparent red oxide. So anyway, I'm using PR 101 Utrecht paint, which they call burnt sienna, and I'm toning the panel with that, uh, which gives it sort of a very light orange color to get started. And basically what I do is I just thin some, um, some burnt sienna with mineral spirits, give it a wash, and then dry it off as much as possible. So it's just a little bit of a light orange tint to the panel. All right, so that's it. Let's get started and go through the painting process. Okay, so the first thing to take note of is how lightly toned the panel is. Again, it's got a light toning of burnt sienna, and, um, and now I'm just sketching in the big shapes using um, burnt sienna as well. And I'm not going for any detail. Like I said, just mapping out the composition. Then I can come in with the darks and work from dark to light. So I'm putting in the shadow colors right now and, um, and areas in the orange that are also in shadow. Um, and then I can start coming in with the more saturated orange colors for the flesh of the orange. Um, it's really fun working with those saturated colors. Uh, I also need to put in the shadow portion of the orange right there where I'm putting in the pith. I didn't know that's what it's called. I had to look it up. But uh, it was kind of a cool, um, it was like sort of a bluish green color. Really nice. It, I, I like the effect when I put that in there. And then also, uh, obviously, the light color of the oranges, which is more or less just, you know, white and yellow. Um, and then I'm going to come in and put in the background, which is a bit of white with phthalo. And that's it. All right, so my SD card maxed out and the process got cut short, um, but let's take a look at the painting. All right, so first thing I'll talk about is this white background here or this ta the tablecloth that the oranges were setting on. Um, this is basically just white paint with a touch of alizarin crimson. 
Um, I use alizarin to warm up a white sometimes when I don't want to use yellow. There's a lot of yellows going on in the oranges. So I didn't want to have yellow also in the tablecloth. So I used a little bit of alizarin crimson, but it's basically just white. Other thing I'll mention is paint application. So I would load the brush and then put a stroke, load again, stroke, load again, stroke. And so there's no, you know, going over the same spot. It was just a definitive stroke, definitive stroke. And I like that look so that there's, you know, all the brushwork is very obvious. And I think what's cool about that is you get these kind of irregular shapes, um, which I think looks more interesting than if it was, you know, than if it was all like perfect and perfectly rounded. Another thing I'll mention is I really wanted to capture this sort of translucent effect, the top of the orange here, because the light is coming from this direction, as you can see from the cast shadows. And so I wanted to make sure that the, you know, there was some light passing through the orange, kind of creating that translucent effect. And um, what else? Oh yeah, the other thing I didn't show in the video process was I just put little highlights, you know, basically white with a little bit of yellow, just pops of light in various locations. I noticed mostly, you know, in the center and then at the ends of the orange slice. I really enjoyed doing this painting. Uh, there are a couple of things I really liked. One is using saturated color. Um, I think the oranges I used, I didn't gray them down at all or barely. Um, I would use a little of the complement of orange, obviously, which was the ultramarine blue. I'd mix that in to kind of darken uh, the orange in some areas. But a lot of it was just pure red, cadmium red light mixed with um, cadmium yellow medium or maybe some mixture with the melizarin crimson as well. But uh, it's really nice to be able to get those saturated colors. In fact, even in the shadows, the sort of bluish purple shadows, um, those were ultramarine blue and white with a maybe a touch of, what did I put in there? A little bit of cadmium red light in there, but not much, just to kind of dull it down a little bit. Um, so the fun thing about uh, doing these little still lifes is that you can use full saturation and it's just, you know, that paint, it's just beautiful. <laughs> you know, the colors are so beautiful. So, um, yeah, so it's really, it's really a good, fun exercise to do still lifes, and I may do more in the future. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, because um, I'd be happy to do some more. Um, the other thing is, too, I want to just re-emphasize, you know, the, the brush stroke thing, because um, it, I think by doing all these still lifes when I started and just trying to load the brush, do a stroke, load the brush, do a stroke, that really helped my plein air painting. So the kind of the two go hand in hand. Um, in the studio, I would practice with these still lifes at just getting really um, deliberate brushwork. So there's not a lot of, not a lot of like sort of, uh, like I said, just going over the same passage over and over, which is how you're gonna get muddy color too. So by doing, loading the brush, and getting a definitive stroke, you're gonna get cleaner color too. Now, when I go to change color, I'll just squeeze out the paint and then I'll wash it in my brush washer so I have a clean brush. Um, I use one brush. I know some painters will hold a handful of brushes. They'll have darks and lights. I just don't work that way. I'm not that organized. I like to just have one tool and just go for it. And if I need to change colors, I'll just rinse it out. Um, and if there's a little bit of, uh, you know, other paint in there, it's a not enough to affect the color. Unless you're painting with white, then it can sometimes, you gotta really make sure you clean it well if you're gonna do the white. But that's at the end, it's not really a problem. Um, so yeah, for me, a single brush works. Um, but yeah, experiment with that, just doing those simple, strong brush strokes. Um, like I said, it'll give you cleaner color. And I think it also gives the painting a look of confidence and like there's a real strong intention, like you know what you're doing. So even if you don't know what you're doing, put that paint on with confidence and with attitude. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video. So let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for hanging out guys. And also too, we're getting towards the end of the month here. I wanna thank my Patreon supporters. Um, 
Patreon is what allows me to keep making these videos. If you're interested, there is a Patreon link down below. Uh, but as I said, thanks for hanging out, guys. I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.